Hi, my name is Abroga Lang, and my mentors are Michael Heapen and Adam Oaks. And I'm a student here at the University of Toledo, and my project is on the characterization of carbon single wall nanotube hydrogenase nano biohybrid films for hydrogen production. <laughs> okay, so this is based off of Professor Heapen's, or a past experiment on by, uh, Professor Heapen. And it was found that when hydrogenase enzyme adhere, or they, they do adhere to carbon single wall nanotubes or SWINT, and these nanotubes are both metallic type and semiconducting type. And in an oxygen free environment, the, if there's a, an electron source, the enzyme will actually produce hydrogen gas from your solution. It, and this shows you have your nanotube here and with an enzyme here to it. And in order to do this, we have to make a thin film with our nanotubes. So this is kind of a breakdown. We have our solution. This is in 1% SDS. And we usually take anywhere from one milliliter to, uh, I think the highest one we have here is to three milliliters, or yeah, milliliters. And this is just a vacuum filtration system. And so right in this, we have these filters. And this one here, I believe, is three milliliter. And the one on the right is two milliliter. So the two milliliter has less nanotubes on it. And with these membrane transfers, the membrane, we have a 220 nanometer pore size membrane. And then what we used here are 25 nanometer pore size membrane. And we, I've been making two different types, one with a, a gold membrane or gold film on it, and the gold is 25 nanometers thick. That's the one on the left. And with that, we make our electrodes for our electrochemistry application. And the one on the right is for just applying to, to glass. We take our nanotubes, which are on the membrane, and put it on a glass slide, and then dissolve the membrane with an acetone treatment. Now, in order to kind of understand what's going on, we do uh, atomic force microscopy, which is a form of a scanning probe microscope. And so for my first couple weeks, I got good at using the AFM. And this is a 5 micron by 5 micron scan, scan image of a carbon nanotube film on silicon. So it's really flat. And each of these spider webby kind of uh, lines are bundles of nanotubes or individual nanotubes. Like right here, this is our 500 nanometer scan, and we believe that's a single nanotube. Okay, so after I got good at AFM, I took scans to see how the morphology and see how flat our filters were. And let's see, this one is without any gold on it, and the, the, each of these is a pore, and they vary in size, but on average they're about 25 nanometers. And then with our gold film on it, it didn't change much. And this is one of our first scans with nanotubes filtered through onto the gold. And we think due to like, the water current, or the, the solution current, in our filtration, you get kind of like these bundles. You can't really see it well blown up, but we have parallel nanotube bundles here all throughout the whole film. Now for future work to do with this, we have, we're going to make solutions and try different techniques to get the hydrogenase to adhere to our nanotube solutions and then make films out of those. Now for our electrodes, or by making the film onto the, the gold, we can make an electrode out of it, and then we can do some electrochemistry and determine if the enzyme is in fact adhered to the uh, nanotubes or if it's just bunched together with them and not adhered. And this, is, this picture is um, one of he, uh, Professor Heaven's, and it's a better drawing than mine. It's, this is the enzyme here, and then you have your nanotube. And after we get a good electrochemistry result, 
and in fact is producing hydrogen. Um, then we can also characterize it with AFM and figure out what it looks like or if the enzymes will be like sitting on top of the film or in fact just uh, create like a top or er, more of like uh, hilly kind of uh, less flat areas. So the enzyme would be underneath the nanotubes in that case. And <coughs> So, um, so the way you made hydrogen is by sort of electrolysis. Uh, yeah. I guess is what you're planning to do. And then the idea is to have one electrode sort of consisting of this nanotube hydrogenase film. And the hope is that the hydrogenase will allow you to make more hydrogen with the same current or something or voltage. Yeah, we had, um, actually I have it back over here. This was work done by Professor Huben before. And we have, this is our hydrogenase with nanotubes. And this is our voltage here, our potential. And this is platinum, so a platinum electrode. And we found out that the nanotubes start producing uh, hydrogen right about at the same point as the platinum. So it'd be. I don't know, a cheaper way, I guess, is to make hydrogen gas through electrolysis. Any more questions? Any more questions? All right, let's say. Oh, there go. I assume ultimately that's still solar driven, right? Um, I do believe so. The, for the enzyme to uh, react. You need this yeah. potential when you get that through the solar cell, which is the solar cell going to be, uh, is that, can the, car, can the nanotubes themselves act as a solar cell? You know that there's some... I'm actually not sure. I'm not sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> they could, but uh, we're also, some of our other research is looking at uh, working on CAD tell to make nanotubes as a back contact. So if you kind of bring all these together, if you can make a cat tell with a uh, back contact of nanotube and enzyme, then you could just use it directly. Any more questions? All right, thanks a lot.